Chris Rennell ran into Swamis as a matter of fact on Sunday. He's sitting there having a coffee in Kingston. Eden Park, Jamie Wall, the most trusted and reliable sports journalist voice in the country. Eden Park, the atmosphere, the crowd, the different vibes. You were at the Bledisloe Cup test. You were there for the All Whites versus the Socceroos. What was the atmosphere like? Was it different or how different was it compared to the other aforementioned? Yeah, hey Marty. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was I think different is, is one way of uh, describing it, but uh, awesome is another way. I, I really enjoyed myself. Um, I loved being able to sit in a media box and have a look around and see a different set of people uh, sitting in front of me than I would for an All Black test um, for a start. This is no, 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 not meant at all to disparage the sort of people that go to All Black tests or anything or, or what they what they're about, but uh, I saw a lot of kids. Uh, I saw a lot of families. I saw a lot of people who were at a rugby game for either the first time in a long time or the first time ever, which is something that is really important uh, for the game going forward because we've seen, as I'm sure you know, crowds start to stagnate over the last decade and then quite gradually and then quite rapidly decline. Um, and it's to do with the fact that the All Blacks have been put up as the most important team um, and, uh, sorry, gone from being the most important team to the really the only team that uh, that they want you to care about. And so as long as they're selling out, then, then NZ Rugby's hit their KPIs. So I think it's awesome that World Rugby have staged this tournament in New Zealand and really forced uh, the hand on the Black Ferns to make them into uh, a, a team that's drawing that many people to, to Eden Park um, and, and an, on an October night. Uh, and uh, a lot of a lot of positive feedback, uh, a lot of smiles, um, a lot of engagement um, from the team, which is exactly what women's rugby needs because, you know, you think back to when this team first really started hitting the public consciousness. They were playing in front of, you know, hundreds of people, maybe a few thousand here and there. The last World Cup managed to sort of draw, I think it was 16,000, 17,000 to its, its final, but it was still getting played at a, at, a, at a club ground in Belfast. And so to put them in the biggest stadium in New Zealand, you know, a place that's synonymous with all-black rugby success, and to see that many people turning out was something that was pretty unique. Jamie awesome. Wall with us. Yeah, look, so much to absorb from there. Um, I've got a million questions I was asked, but one of the things I was going to say to you was I didn't go to, to the game. I didn't go to the stadium. There's so much sport on. I was juggling about three screens at once. But I did wander down into Kingston just to just to get a vibe as to who was around and whether it was the same kind of crowd. And one thing that I really noticed was it was a completely different crowd than you get for an All Black test. Now, the All Black test... 80% of the crowd sit there with their arms folded, face like a drop pie, and the All Blacks never score enough points, never play well enough. Bloody coach this, bloody coach that. I saw a heck of a lot, as you say, families. I saw a lot of kids running around. I just saw a lot of people that were actually going to go to something to enjoy themselves. Now, how many times do you say that about an All Black test at Eden Park, Jamie? As weird as it is, I've been going for 20, 30, 40 years. You've been going for probably just as long. The crowd at an All Black test the word enjoyment hardly ever comes into the conversation. Why is that? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting question because I think that the feeling you get at an all-black test of expectation and tension and criticism is what the all-blacks have made for themselves. They wouldn't be the all-blacks kind of without that. Uh, it's not just a case of the only people that go to watch the all-blacks are, are grumpy old old farts who yeah want to um, sit there. It's, you go in there with this expectation of watching the you know the greatest rugby team of all time, and you get impatient when they're not they're not playing well. I feel like that's just kind of part of the All Black fan experience. Now the Black Ferns, that's a completely different kettle of fish, isn't it? The, you know you're watching a bunch of really uh, hardworking women um, going out and playing a, a sport that they you know you don't a lot of people just don't associate um, with women, and then it turns out hey they're, they're pretty good. You know, like if, if that was the first, a lot of people's first taste of, of women's rugby, and I think it was for a lot of a lot of people tuning in and a lot of people at the ground, then you have to walk away pretty impressed, even though the Blackburns actually played like rubbish for the first, whole first half. They managed to get it get it back. And so I, I think one of the main things I took out of it was for a lot of the people that were there for the first time is they were experiencing the wave 
that you get of going to a sporting event where your team's not doing so well and you start to freak out a little bit and then they come back and there's nothing like a comeback win when you're in the ground, isn't there? You know, like where you can sort of sit there and cheer and then, then say, oh, you know, we had it in the bag or the whole way. You know, it's, it's a really nice feeling. It's a really something that's synonymous with sport, you know. So I think that um, there was plenty of, of experiences, tactile experiences that happened in that game where for a lot of the people who are going there for the first time, it would make them want to come back. Yeah, the Twitter sphere is awful and negative and as down pressing as it always is. Lots of people taking photos saying, hey, the ground wasn't sold out. I saw some photos where, it, you know, the crowd looked as though it was just about packed out. I saw some where there were some empty patches. I think staying all day in that stadium for five, six, seven, eight hours to watch three games is a pretty tough ask for anyone. I mean, sitting there watching cricket all day is hard enough. I mean, it's the same as the cake tin. They're not the most comfortable places to sit, are they? But I thought that was a heck of a crowd. And rather than, Jamie, the, did they sit there and pick holes in it? Why can't we just appreciate and actually celebrate what it is? The World Cup for Women has kicked off. Yes, it's it's in Auckland and it's in Waitakere and it's and it's in Whangarei. That's all. It's not a nationwide tournament. Twelve teams are here. As you say, the standard of rugby is pretty good. If the fans are going along and having a good time and loving it, I don't know what you know there is to pick holes at. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of struggling here thinking people will always try and find fault with things in New Zealand and I just don't get it sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think at the, at the end of it, it, it was a bit of a moot point because it's like, well, you know, if you were to tell us that thirty four thousand, I think was the was the official figure, um, would show up to watch a Black Ferns game, uh, even a, a year ago when they were going through the sort of um, tumultuous times they were, I don't think anyone would have believed you. Uh, so for them to have to 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 get that sort of number is phenomenal really and and like my hat goes off to the organizers because they they really hit the right notes um on everything in terms of marketing in terms of game day experience um and you know the black ferns respond with with what was eventually a win um i i i think if there's a lesson to be learned it's probably that maybe the tournament organizers probably shouldn't have shot their mouth off about the the ground being sold out because unless we're going to be in there and, and look around and see every single seat filled like you would at, at an all-black game, then you are going to get questioned about that. And to me, I think it's about time that we probably put away the whole record-breaking crowd for women's sports thing. It's a really, it's a narrative that it's like, well, of course, everything's going to be a record if you add some asterisks next to it. But the reality is, is that, I mean, that while it was an awesome crowd, and this, you know, this isn't meant to disparage it at all. I mean, it wasn't even the bigger, anywhere near the biggest um crowd for a women's sporting event that that day because the England women's team uh, football team played the USA at Wembley and there was 90,000 people there right. and then we saw the NRLW last week they had 43,000 people there for the Parramatta and um, uh, who they who the play was it Sydney, Sydney Roosters uh, game so I think that um, you know the more you talk about records it's like I want this just to be part of the everyday narrative of like a crowd like yeah it was a great crowd because it's because they draw great crowds it should be normalized that we talk about this this sort of thing um you know if, if the black ferns can make the final we're going to see a bigger one as well but it, it, it's like of course it should be it's a world cup you know that's what world cups do they they bring people in so you know the, the, it, this tournament was always going to be about the first day and the last day and the first day's been a stunning success. Um, the last day should be a success as well. Now it's up to the organisers to make sure everything in between is maximised uh, as well. Just one more question on this before we get to the All Black selections yesterday. And, you know, I mean, I know that, you know, the clickbait editors have, you know, instructions from their chiefs to get as many clicks as possible. I, 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 I do find the mass media coverage of this here in New Zealand a little over the top and, and, and quite hyped at a time where I just don't think it needs to be. I, I, I just wish they would let this tournament be what it is. It isn't the be-all and end-all of world sport. It, it might not even be the biggest event that's going on in the country right now. It could be. But, you know, does it need all this constant ramming down our throat of comparison and trying to sort of justify the you know the, the everyday headlines and the dominating of the sports news because of the fact that they want to cover this event can't they just cover this event because it is a great event do you know what i'm getting at yeah no i know exactly what you mean and i mean we started this conversation by comparing it to an all-black test uh i i i think that it definitely has enough um uh justification as an event to stand on its own two feet i think there's enough 
genuine interest in the in the black ferns because they are quite a compelling story because yes. it's a story of redemption, which is what sport is all about. Um, and I think that the the standard rugby that they're playing is is very watchable. Like it's a decent it's a decent product. The one thing I do kind of have an issue is that the officiating hasn't been so great so far, and I think that might sort of cause a few problems down down the track. But I mean that's an, again another bit of narrative that should get picked up and and just talked about the same way we talk about the men. I think that yesterday and today is about celebrating that uh, that that night because I think that they, it deserves it. Um, but I think from now on we should be focusing on the Black Ferns about like, okay, they kind of got out of jail on that. You know, that was not a great first half. Obviously, it took them about 25 minutes just to get their hands on the ball. They benefited massively from two yellow cards, which really, when you think about it, was very lucky considering that they both happened at the same time. So therefore, uh, Perry's uh, re- uh, yellow for uh, head contact should have actually cancelled out the knockdown by Vania Wong. Um, that happened as the play went on. Like, that's a massive glaring black hole in the laws that, uh, so that the Black Ferns benefited from. Um, there's a few other incidents in that game as well where they kind of got away with things they, they shouldn't have. And they did rely on just individual brilliance uh, to run away with that game, which is not something that's going to be sustainable against better teams. So I think that some critical analysis of the Black Ferns, you know, as we go forward is going to be what really makes this tournament uh, justified in, uh, in, in people's minds. Brand new topic then. Yesterday, the All Blacks squad was announced. No great shakes, surprises, which is a real shame. You kind of hope that there's going to be a bolter, but it just goes to show how little the NPC counts these days. There's not. We've got the All Blacks 15 announced this afternoon. The only talking point I thought from yesterday is all about the midfield. And when you bring an Anton Leonard Brown back in after he hasn't played any rugby at all, a half an hour cameo on the weekend, what does it say again for Roger? And I do wonder whether or not, if it hadn't been such a big money signing, that he would actually even be in there. It says to me when Enor comes back, ALB comes back, and they've named Jordy as a fullback. It says to me that, Roger, there is no place for you in that midfield right at the moment, even though the selectors haven't decided. Well, that's, that's, good. that's a very good point. But at the same time, considering that they can't even make up their mind on the midfield from one test to another... It's probably not right to say that the door is shutting on Roger Tuivasa-Shek because he'll have a whole other Super Rugby campaign to impress, and if he comes out the the back end of that looking all right, he's going to get another run this year because everyone else is. I mean, you know, if me and you wore a 12 or 13 on our back, we'll probably get a run at some point. They haven't been able to uh, have a consistent um, uh, combination there since Smith and Nonu, and that's seven years ago. So, I mean, I I think that they should really let him know where he stands um, at the moment. But I, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't actually think the All Black coaches know themselves. Finally, what does it tell you, Jamie, about New Zealand rugby at the moment that Wellington play Hawks Bay at the Cakedon? Okay, it's a quarterfinal of the NPC, which Sky, you know, happily promoted as the soul of New Zealand rugby. Yet a day later... There's a soccer match. The Phoenix play their first game. I'm only saying soccer to be patronising, where four times the crowd turns up. Is that not a worry for New Zealand rugby? And if it's not a worry, why the hell is it not a worry? Well, clearly it doesn't worry them, because otherwise they would have done something about it by now, wouldn't they? And, I mean, they clearly don't care about the NPC at all. And they've made that quite clear, because we had a game held in Kaikoua the other week where they didn't even have proper rugby goalposts set up. So whatever standards they've set for provincial rugby over the last, you know, 100 and so years have just been tossed out. We've had, um, you know, TMOs uh, that have had their powers completely, like, taken away because the, the, the camera crews aren't in place. We talked about that last week. Um, but it's just quite clear that the, the NPC is being run just as a way of giving New Zealand's provincial uh, provisional semi-professional rugby players something to do um, and to keep the unions happy because they're the ones who make up New Zealand, New Zealand rugby itself. Um, it's really it's really sad uh, to see it uh, to see it in the state that it is. But, I mean, you know, we've had this conversation before and I feel like we're going to be having it again because um, the fact that it even overlaps with a World Cup, uh, you know, the Women's World Cup, uh, is crazy because we were talking about it on the weekend that had Auckland, uh, sorry, had Wellington lost to Hawks Bay, Auckland would have been hosting a quarterfinals week, and they would have had nowhere to play it because Eden Park's out because they the World Rugby owns it for the next um, month or so. 
So yeah, it's um, it's all been you know, uh, it, it just, that just goes to show. I think that anecdote shows just how little priority it's been given, just how little that they care about it, because they know no one else does.